Hey, this is Little Talk with Big Nikki. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back for another episode of Little Talks with Big Nikki. I'm your host, Big Nikki. Um, so clearly, we are in the holiday season. Got my snowman blanket here. Got my la 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 pillow behind me. Um, got my baby it's cold outside mug full of hot chocolate. And I got my uh, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal sweater on. If you don't know what that's from, you're not cultured. It's from Home Alone, if anyone who didn't know. And yes, I just called you uncultured because if you haven't seen that movie, that is like the class myth. The classic Christmas movie. I can't talk. The classic Christmas movie. Boom. Um, so what are we talking about today? Just holiday stuff. I just wanted to have this episode uh, be like a little, little fun, little loose. Uh, last week was kind of more like serious toned and um, you know, holidays are upon us. So just wanted to talk about some things Christmas related. Um, why don't we just talk about movies since I just brought that up. Um, favorite movies for Christmas, Home Alone, of course, Home Alone 2. Uh, I never watched Home Alone 3 and I don't think I ever will because they changed the kid. You can't have Home Alone without um, Macaulay Culkin. So I, I'm not into that. I'm not interested. Um, and then of course we have Christmas Vacation, a grand old Griswold family Christmas. Uh, that is the classic in my household and in my family. Everybody quotes that movie. Everybody knows like all the lines from that movie. We watch it every year, sometimes multiple times a year. Uh, no shame. Great, great, great movie. Um, my dad's favorite character is Cousin Eddie. Um, don't blame me. Cousin Eddie really brings the comedic relief um, to that film. And then uh, Christmas with the Cranks is a good one too with Tim Allen. Of course, you got the Santa Clauses with Tim Allen. Those are classics. Um, what else? What else? Elf. Elf is a good one. I have an Elf shirt as well. Um, I think it says something about being a cotton-headed ninny muggins. So that's always, you know, nice to call somebody. Um, I don't really know what it is, but they don't say it like it's a good thing. So I don't think it's a good thing. Um, but better than calling people some other names that we could call them, if you ask me. So, uh, yeah, you got Elf. Um, I never really got into the, like, classic Christmas movies, like Rudolph or even, like, yeah, like any of those, like, claymation ones. Does everyone know what I'm talking about? I feel like if you're, like a real true Gen Z, you might not know what I'm talking about, but 90s and beyond or above us would know. It's like those claymation, like stop time, like motion frame things, which is actually like when you're watching it, you're like, wow, what a feat for like the 70s or whenever the things were made. Some of them were made like even before the 70s, I think, but it's like, wow, what a feat of like, filmmaking, you know, um, ingenuity to create like something like that and have it actually like flow and like make sense and look good. But it's not even because of the production quality. I just never got into those movies. Um, never really had them on as a kid, I guess. So, but yeah, classic, uh, movies, definitely Home Alone and Christmas Vacation. Cannot, cannot go throughout the season without those two. Um, uh, Christmas though, in general, is just like, I don't know. It's like a weird season. I really, a part of me loves it. Like I, I do, I do love the holiday season, but another part of me is kind of like a Grinch or a Scrooge, whichever one, I don't know. Um, my roommate gets really excited. Everything you see here decoration wise, which you should see the rest of the apartment. Uh, looks like the North Pole in here. Um, it was like all her, like she does all the decorating and stuff. She really gets into that. Um, I feel like I would do it if she didn't. I probably wouldn't do it as well. Maybe not as enthused. I would do it. I like, here's the thing. Like, so I'm not like cut out for the holiday season. I like, I kind of suck at like everything that like makes the holiday season the season in the sense of like, I can't wrap gifts. 
I really suck at wrapping gifts. Never can get it. Papers, it's just not my thing. I, I'm not good at like ribbons or like making like a bow out of ribbon. Like I, I can't, I can't do that stuff. Um, I don't like to bake slash, I don't even know if I really can bake. So like you ain't get, you ain't getting cookies from me. You know, I just not good at it. And then to like decorating stuff, like there again, like I, I like things to be decorated, but I don't like actually doing it and I'm not, and I think it's because I'm not very good at doing it. Like what I have like in my head is like the vision of like what I want isn't what actually turns out. So I like get frustrated with it. Hot chocolate break. Gotta drink it before it's cold. Got myself uh, some Swiss Miss with mini marshmallows. <laughs> That's the way to go. That is the way to go. Um, hot chocolate debate. Water or milk? I like it made with either, but usually I'm too lazy to do the milk thing and like I have a Keurig, so it's way easier for me to just turn the Keurig on, heat it up, and then just do the water. So yeah, I, I know a lot of you are probably really like disappointed and sad that I drink a lot of my hot chocolate with water, but I will, I will do uh, lactose free milk <laughs> or almond milk preferably. Um, but I will, I will do it with milk. Um, I'm just usually too lazy, too lazy to do that. Um, but yeah, just not being cut out for the holiday season. It's just the, everything I just said, like decorating, wrapping and baking. Like I just, I'm not, I'm not good at those things. So like sometimes it's more stressful than it is like in my mind, like worth doing it like causes me more stress than like brings joy so like that's why I can like become like a Grinch like really quickly I guess um, another thing too is just like how like holidays have just changed like in my life personally and I was just talking to a friend about this today and I'm sure like a lot of us have probably experienced similar things like when I was a kid, like Christmas was like the best holiday. Like literally we used to deck our home. Like we were decked. Cause my mom like, you know, she always liked doing that. And like I was a kid, so she wanted to like make sure the house like was all festive and you know, for me. And I like appreciate her for that. And I like appreciate it now probably more so than I did when I was a kid. But it was just like fun back then. like. I mean, I remember like we had like a, we had a two story house growing up. So like going up the banister, like we would like put garland and then every like other, we had like these uh, bows that we would like twist tie on. It just, it looked like so cute. Like kind of wish we would have been a family that like had people over and had holiday parties cause our house would have been perfect for it. But we never did, never do. I don't know. We're, we're not, I don't know if that's like I don't know if that's like Hollywood, like depiction of family, like, oh, have everyone over and have a holiday party, but like never had that. We, we never, we weren't a family that did that. I don't know if it's cause where we live, like, I don't know. I don't know. We just, we never did that. We still don't do that. We just don't like have people over. I like having people over. Like now that I'm like kind of out on my own, like in my apartment, like I like having people over, not necessarily like hosting parties, having people over, but I don't know. We just never had people over as you know, as a family or like when I was a kid, but we would like deck the house regardless. And, um, then like, I mean, it wasn't even just that aspect, but I mean, you're a kid. So the thought of Santa, you know, coming was fun and magical, mysterious. Um, my parents never got me into elf on a shelf though. I didn't even really know what that was until honestly, I came to college and, um, someone I was working for, she was talking about like doing it for her daughter. And I was like, I don't, I don't even know what Elf on a Shelf is. Cause like, that just was not in my family at all growing up. We just, that was nothing like my parents ever talked about or like we did, or like they did for me. Like, I just, I don't even remember that. Um, but 
it, it was just like the whole like magic behind like oh Santa's coming and like I would do the milk and cookies which now like it's funny to think back and be like oh my dad probably like loved eating those kiss cookies that we would make and like that used to be like m me and my dad's thing is like we would make like kiss cookies like that was like the one thing like me and my dad did like in the kitchen like without my mom it was just kind of like our thing um which like looking back is like really nice and like i'm glad i like had those times even though i don't remember like every detail of it i can like remember it in general um but it's just like so so much has changed in the fact of like family wise like when i was a kid we used to go to my grandma's um and i was like the youngest in like that side of the family and that like bunch so i literally was loaded with toys like our car literally was santa's sleigh with all of the stuff that i had in there that people got me um and that was like you know as a kid like the, the true like meaning of Christmas isn't like top of mind. You're more like, ooh, what did I get? What did I get? What did I get? Um, I got so much stuff, so much stuff. Um, I was definitely like a very like, I don't want to call myself spoiled because like I don't like the connotation that has, but I was definitely a very like blessed child in the fact of like my grandparents bought me stuff and I had aunts and uncles and like, older cousins because of like the age gap even just like within my mom's family like my cousins were already like older um and you know like they were buying me gifts because i was just like a little toddler um and like we used to have like dinner like i mean you know i, I remember like the kolache and the kibasi and like um, my mom's family is like polish and slovakian so we had like those dishes and just like every meal like there at my grandma's I remember like my aunt cindy she like always she still does she still does but she talking about that time specifically she always like made me laugh like to the point where like i'm surprised i didn't choke i'm honestly surprised i did not actually physically choke as a child because she was always making me laugh with something like silly um while I was eating or whatever, it got to a point my mom's like, you can't sit next to her until you're done eating because my mom was worried I was gonna choke. But um, yeah, I mean, like I miss that so much. And I think like that's another reason too, like now, like, and this is getting into what I'm, you know, saying about, I feel like a lot of people are experiencing this or have experienced this of like people in your family pass away um, people in your family change and relationships change and situations and just everything combined and like it gets to a point where nothing is like it used to be um which I mean I guess like stuff can't necessarily last forever but it's like you know grandpa passed away and then like some stuff went down in the family and then as I like got a little bit older like grandma started to like slow down you know and then she ended up passing away and then it's like no one ever really took over like oh we're gonna go to like this person's house for christmas then instead because like grandma and grandpa's house isn't an option anymore like it just didn't happen so like pretty much like christmas like kind of stopped happening um and i i am an only child so i don't have any siblings so it's you know holidays now it's like me my mom and my dad at home watching Christmas vacation and I feel like that's like a reality like for a lot of people where it's like holidays now can just kind of be like lonely and maybe even just a little bit like painful in the sense of like you really start to miss like the people that used to like make your holidays like so special and like now like they're not there anymore and you're not like having those family dinners or like going over to so-and-so's house and it can get like, you know, it's, I don't like to think about it a lot because it's like sad to me because like I was a kid then and I didn't appreciate it as much as I would appreciate it now because like I know what it's like not to have it. And also I'm like old enough to realize like how precious time like with like grandparents can be. Um, but I definitely, I like miss it. I mean, I have like fond memories as a kid, which I'm like thankful for, but it's like now it's kind of like, 
I don't know what everyone gets so worked up about because people are like, oh, it's Christmas, it's Christmas. And I'm like, okay, it's literally like another such and such a day for me. Like we don't, we don't do anything. Um, I mean, you know, like being a Christian, of course, like Christmas is important to me from the standpoint of like, it's when like we celebrate like Jesus being born, which if he was never born, he never would have died for us. You know, like that whole um, sequential like timeline of events, but like, so it's important to me from that standpoint. I don't want anyone to like misunderstand what I'm saying. Like I do like appreciate and like love Christmas for that like purpose of it. But the more like communal, like family orientation and you know, gifts and everything. And I'm not a big, like my love language. Like I'm not a big like gifts person. Like I appreciate gifts like, and people, you know, in my life have like gotten me like really good gifts and I like definitely appreciate it. Um, and I enjoy, you know, getting things, but I don't like, I don't need to get things to be like, um, like emotionally like satisfied, if that makes sense. Like to be emotionally like happy. I, I don't, I don't need, um, gifts. So like I, to me, it's just, it's just, as I get older, it's just like, it's not what it was. Um, and I don't know, like, you know, with my age and, you know, as the years progress, like, I don't know, like maybe once I like get married or something, I don't know if maybe like his family will do something or like be more traditional in like what they do, or if they're kind of like my family and they're like, well, we don't do anything either. We just like sit at home. Like, so I don't know, like if I'm ever going to be able to regain that sense of like everyone coming together and having a meal and being in one place at one time. And I, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to regain that. I think it would be nice to, but I'm also a realist and I know like that that might not happen. So I think, I think that's why a lot of people like might be like me where we don't hate Christmas. We don't hate the holidays, but like, we're also not super like woo like overjoyed and ecstatic about it either um because like it's kind of lost it's like wonderment and like luster in a sense i think so it's hard to be all super excited for it um when things that made it exciting are no longer there i think is a good way to put it but i mean every year we we still go get a tree. My mom's whole thing with like live trees is like, she likes to hear the uh, the pine cones pop um, in the heat of like the house. And so like every tree we get has to have pine cones on it. Um, which it seems to get harder and harder every year. And every year I tell her, I was like, okay, mom, like just prepare yourself that, you know, it might not have pine cones and like, it'll be okay. <laughs> but then her whole thing back to me is like, well, if it doesn't have pine cones, then I might as well get a fake one. <laughs> uh, but so it's really funny because like one of like the things I never did as a child was like, we never went to like pick out a Christmas tree in the sense of like those places where you can like get a horse drawn carriage and it takes you through the field and you go out in the field and you pick a Christmas tree. like. We never did that ever. Like that was not my childhood. We go to the pre-cut, they already like went out and chopped it down for you. And you just literally go in and pick one. Um, the place we used to go, which is now closed down, which I'll get to that story in a second, but it, it was huge. It was like, especially as a little kid, maybe it felt bigger to me cause I was small than it actually was. But I remember they had a big, garage slash barn, whatever you want to call it with all the trees in it. And they had a big dog and that's little Nikki was happy with that. Um, but we just always got them like pre-cut and, you know, strapped them to the roof, took them home and set them up. So it was like a couple years ago when we moved into like our new house, we, my dad like had to work and it was like one of the only days we could like get this tree because like I was still like in high school and it was like, you know, my schedule was crazy with like extracurriculars and stuff. And so my mom's like, okay, Nick, like we're going to have to go. So we like drive to the place we always went and like surprise, they weren't open. 
So my, my mom was like, well, all right. And so like, we're literally like going to like six different freaking like Christmas tree places. And one of them was the place that I just described where it's like, you get on a carriage with your hot chocolate or your hot apple cider and like you ride into the field and then you like cut down your tree and like, like it's like a whole like magical fairyland day experience for you and the family. Again, never did that. I'm not hating on it. I am not hating on it at all. I feel like I might actually enjoy it I take that back. I don't like being cold, but I, I feel like the, the idea is nice, but I just, we never did that. That's not something that our family did. So, um, we went there though and we're like, well, this ain't gonna work. Cause like, we're like, I'm like, mom, you ready to like get on a carriage? And she's like, no. So we were like, okay, well that's not gonna work. So whatever. We end up finally at this one place and my mom's like, I just want a tree with pine cones. So talking to the guy and he's like, well, go out there and see if there's one you like. Again, this is not a pre-cut place. Now at this point, I don't know if both of our brains were fried or like what we were thinking, but we go like into the groves, which neither one of us, specifically me, I don't even remember what shoes I had on or whatever I was wearing, but I was not really cut out to be out in a field looking for a Christmas tree, okay? So we go like out into where they're still rooted in the ground, like they're pine trees. And we find this one and my mom's like, oh, well, like I like this one. And I look and I was like, okay, well, it looks like it has pine cones. So like, this could be a winner, let's do this. So my mom's like, well, he's gonna have to come like, you know, cut it down for us. And I was like, well, yeah. So we like walk back to the main building. We like find the guy and we're like, Hey, like we found this one Christmas tree. And he's like, okay, like, did you bring a saw? What did we, did we bring up? No, no, we didn't bring a saw. Like we, we are not cutting down our own tree type people. Like we, we don't, we don't do that. And especially like my dad's not even there. Like, you know, like, the guy, the man of the house that like is supposed to cut down the tree and like drag it to the car. Like it's me and my mom. No, no, we don't have a saw. Do we look, do I look like I've come prepared to be out in a tree field for half the day, sir? No. So he was like, well, cause I mean like he gets paid either way. So he was like, well, I'll cut it down for you. Like my mom's like, okay. He goes out there with us with the saw, brings a sled. Like we don't have anything. All these other families, they have saws, they have sleds, shoes, proper shoes. We ain't got nothing. We ain't got no saws, no sleds, no shoes, nothing. Okay, we had shoes, but not shoes to be out in the field. So he comes out, he cuts it, and he was like, well, about like, how tall do you need it? My mom was like, eh, like about a six foot tree would fit in the living room. He's like, okay, well, I'll like leave you an extra foot just like in case. I, I don't know. I don't know why he said that. So he's like, okay, I'll leave you an extra foot, which would make it a seven foot tree, right? Six plus one is seven, right? Okay. So if you think the story is about to get any better, it, it doesn't. So he then cuts it, puts it on the sled. He's dragging and okay. Now the, the sled is only about what, four or five feet long? Maybe, maybe. It's just like a little plastic sled. It's not like a fancy, like for a tree pulling sled. So he's dragging it up this drive and like, it's muddy. Like the whole thing is just like mud, wet, like gross. The tree, the branches are getting drug through the mud because not all of it fits on the sled. So he gets it up on the roof, ties it, whatever, we go home. Oh, the longest day of Christmas tree hunting ever. Get home. My dad's not home yet, but so he gets home a little later. My mom's like, you gotta hose down the tree, like with the hose, because it's muddy. So my dad hoses down the tree. You know, it's in the netting, wrapped up, hoses it down, get, tries to get the mud off, whatever. Brings it through the front door, we get in the tree stand. Now we have it in front of the window in our living room, blinds, vertical blinds. 
Um, and when I tell you this was the most Griswold um, family Christmas, uh, Christmas vacation story moment um, from that film, this, this is, um, this is it right here, folks. So my dad, first of all, he puts it in the stand and he's like, why is it so tall? And we literally look up in like the top, like where you'd put the tree topper is bent over, like hitting the ceiling. It like this, it is not a seven foot tall tree. My mom's like, the guy said it was seven foot. My dad's like, okay, do you see it hitting the ceiling? And we have like in my new house, we have like cathedral ceilings. So like we have like kind of tall ceilings. I mean, granted, we didn't have the tree in the middle of the room. But still, like taller than your average like ceiling. He was like, "Do you see this? This is not a seven foot tree if it's hitting the ceiling." And my mom's like, "I don't know." He said, "He said it was seven. And then so my dad's like, "No, this is like a nine foot tree." So takes it back out of the thing, cuts like the trunk off. Still doesn't even know if like that's gonna be enough to like shrink this thing. Somehow we got it down where it's not hitting the ceiling. Okay, good. Most. Christmas vacation moment right here. Once we get it back in the stand, we my dad goes to cut the netting off. Whew, branches, mud, water, everything everywhere. The tree literally just as soon as like my dad released that like netting, it just like, pew, like everywhere. Hit the blinds, like had mud on the wall, water like on the window, it like, this tree was huge. It was like massive. It was like a big fat, of course it didn't look that fat in an open field, but you get in your living room, it's pretty, pretty big tree. We as a family, mainly me and my mom, cause we were the ones that experienced this thing A through Z. We still joke about this to this day. And we always say never again, never again are we going, no saw, no sled, no proper shoes to go cut down our own tree. We're not cut out for this. We are not, mm -mm, not us. Maybe, maybe you and your family, not, not me and mine. Nope. So that, that was uh, probably the most interesting Christmas tree story that I have because that was the one and only time that we have ever and probably will ever be going out into a field and cutting down our own tree. And we didn't actually even cut it down ourselves. So it barely even counts. Um, but this year went to get our tree when I was home for Thanksgiving and, uh, my dad's like, <laughs> me and my dad are like so much of the same mind in the sense of like, let's do this efficient and fast and like, let's just get it over with. <laughs> Cause again, like <laughs> my dad doesn't hate the holidays either. It's not like he hates them. We just, we just don't want to do all this stuff. It's just, we're both, I think I get it like from him even more so as I get older, I'm just kind of like. We're just kind of like, we don't want to do all this stuff. Um, so my dad's like, all right, like getting a tree. We're driving to the place that we've gone since that incident. We found a new place that has them pre-cut. And he was like, okay, this should be like three or four minutes tops. I said, I said, this year is going to be the record. I know it. I just felt it in my bones. I knew. So we like pull up and at first like we're looking and I was like, oh, I'm not seeing any pine cones. Mama's going to lose it. So of course my mom starts talking to the tree guy. She's like, well, there's no pine cones and I might as well just have a fake one. Okay, mom, you don't need to tell the guy that. We get it, we get it. He doesn't need to get it. He can't, he just grows. It just, yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, God bless my sweet, sweet mother. I love, I love you. I know she watches this, I love you. Um, but, I like found one, I did like, so I did like one little loop and there's not a lot of trees. This place is not that big, like not a lot of trees. And so I like do another loop and I'm like, ooh, pine cone, got it. I was like, dad, does it look okay? He's like looking at it, he's like, yeah, no dead branches. And I said, we'll take this one. Or like my dad, I didn't say that, but my dad was like, we'll take this one. I was like, ah, perfect. So the guy literally gets it, they're putting it on the car. And I was like, I think that that is the fastest like record for my family personally, maybe for any family anywhere for getting a Christmas tree. I say it was three minutes top for us to walk around the small selection that he has and find that tree. So have a Christmas tree. This one's fake if you were wondering, cause I'm in my apartment, uh, my roommate 
well, my roommate mainly, puts up a fake one. It's just too hard if you're in the city in an apartment to do a real tree. It's like, it's it's too much. It's just too much. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> no cutting down trees for us. Um, but yeah, this year was really smooth. But then like we got in our living room, my mom's like, it kind of looks fat. She's not wrong. It's kind of wide, but it's, it's a cute little wide tree. You know, she's just, she's just a little thick. Um, ornaments went on good. I think it's still alive. Haven't been home since yet. So I think she's still there. I think I would have heard about it if she wasn't. Um, but yeah, so tree problem resolved. Um, in terms of wrapping, in terms of me sucking at wrapping gifts, my solution since I've been like kind of my own independent person on my own has been gift bags in tissue paper. <laughs> this will save you if you're like me and you suck at wrapping gifts, throw it in a gift bag with some tissue paper voila and like now they sell like really cute gift bags target has like a ton of gift bags ton of wrapping paper target is a dangerous place y'all dangerous place for you and your wallet but they have really cute like holiday gift bag type things um so definitely worth it if you're like me and you're not good at wrapping put whatever your little heart desires in a proper size gift bag with some tissue paper. And then too, either the person can give it back to you and you can reuse it for somebody else in the future or like they could take it and reuse it for someone else. I mean, you don't have to, like wrapping paper is like one and done. Actually, okay, I just thought about this as I'm talking about it. Wrapping paper, not reusable, not environmentally sustainable. I don't even know if wrapping paper is technically recycled because it's not like typical paper. I know people probably put it in their recycling, but I don't know if it's actually recyclable. So maybe think twice before putting it in the recycling. But see there again, I mean, tissue paper, okay, like yeah, tissue paper is not really reused either, but at least tissue paper in my mind at least is more like paper paper than wrapping paper is. So I'm just saying like, you know, maybe, maybe it's just environmentally sustainable and better for you in general, if you're not good at wrapping, especially if you just get a gift bag. I don't, I'm just, just saying. So that's what I do, at least that's how I solve that problem. Um, but yeah, I like, I like, I like Christmas. I like the time, time's good. I think I get cranky too, because it's cold. It's very cold here in Cleveland. It's, it's very, very cold. Um, and it's only gonna get colder and it's only gonna get snowier. Um, but it gets dark so early too, like, then I just want to go to bed at like 5.30 and that's not good or productive. So I think it's just like, it's not even like Christmas necessarily. It's just like the time of year doesn't put me in a good mood either. Cause I'm like, I want the sun. I want to not be freezing. I get really irritated and like, I don't want to say claustrophobic, but I get all like, ah, if I'm like in too many layers of clothes, like if I'm in like you know, five layers of shirts and sweaters and jackets. And I just, I can't, I can't like stand myself. Like everything's like choking me or like moving in the wrong way or like just, I hate it. I just hate being like layered to an uncomfortable point, which to survive some of these winter days you have to do, but like I get, I just get irritated. Um, so yeah, I just, you know, like, not everyone's gonna be as excited as maybe you are about the holidays and that's okay. Um, they don't have to be. Um, everyone just kinda, you know, has their own, like what they do, what they like to do and what they like to put inside their baby it's cold outside mug. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, you know, like everyone has kind of like a different background, a different rhyme or reason of why they either really, really, really love Christmas or why like they, maybe hate it or maybe why like they're indifferent to it. I kind of feel like I fall in the indifferent category, but um, yeah, hopefully we're gonna make it to Christmas Eve Eve service at church this year. You heard me right, Christmas Eve Eve. If you do not go to King's church and you're listening to this, uh, our church started a cool thing where like we don't do Christmas Eve service because so many churches do that. We do Christmas Eve Eve service. So kind of like our own like unique thing um, last year we didn't get to go because my dad got the stomach flu on Christmas Eve Eve. So 
we had plans to come and then we couldn't. So fingers crossed that nothing like that happens this year and we can actually go um, and at least have like some sort of something that we do for the holiday um, as a family. But yeah, uh, I feel like that's all I got for you guys today, honestly. Um, I didn't, I'm not going to lie, I didn't plan too, too much for this specific podcast because I knew I was probably going to do something holiday related, but I just thought like, you know, just talk from the heart, talk from some memories, some standpoints of like kind of why I think how I think now and what's kind of changed and happened, um, in my life surrounding Christmas. Um, yeah, remember to be kind to people. I mean, this goes forever and always, but especially around the holidays, be nice to people, be generous. Um, I know it's like, at least for me, it's one of the hardest times of year to almost be generous because you're like getting things for other people kind of like on your list as it is. And then you're like, oh, I don't really have money to give to such and such. Um, but try, try, try to be generous, try to be kind. Um, you know, some people like they deal with a lot for the holidays. Um, I'm not trying to say like my situation is like, I'm not asking for sympathy or anything. Some people have it a lot worse. Um, but just just remember like you don't know where everyone's been and you know, where they're coming from. Just, just be nice, just be nice to everybody. Um, but yeah, semester's wrapping up. Has wrapped up by the time you guys see this, um, which is good. All my college uh, babies out there, Make sure you get some sleep, make sure you eat, make sure you rest, um, and just decompress from the craziness that is college for the, that was the past three months. So make sure you take care of yourself. Um, Self-care, very important. Do what you need to do in order to get yourself right. Um, and yeah, I appreciate you guys for listening. Thank you so much for uh, either watching this on YouTube or listening on iHeartRadio or Spotify. Um, I think I'm going to have one more. I think there's one more bef before the new year hits. Shoot, is that right? I'm going to look. I'm going to look right now because I, I don't have calendar days memorized in my head. Ooh, no. Oh my gosh, this is the last podcast before the new year guys that's crazy wow okay i just realized that that's insane so guys happy like holidays like merry christmas and happy new year and oh my gosh wow uh, 2020 is upon us um i'm excited to hopefully be talking about some stuff maybe new year's related maybe just like Things to come, things I'm excited for, dreams and aspirations. We'll get into all that in 2020. Um, if you guys don't know, if you haven't been following this maybe since the beginning, this is going to be like right after New Year's actually will be like a year since I started doing these vlogs and um, you know, now of course turning them into a podcast. So that's insane. Wow. Um, what a year it's been. I appreciate anyone who's been like a ride or die with me since day one. Y'all are my people, the real MVPs. Um, but if you're just on uh, joining this, you know, hearing it for the first time, please uh, feel free to share it. Share it with your friends, share it with family. Um, appreciate you guys listening. Please be sure to subscribe, follow, comment, like, um, follow me on social media, popping up on your screen right now if you're watching this. If not, be sure to follow me on Instagram. Specifically, I'm a big Instagram user at Nicole underscore Merlino 14. Um, that's M-E-R-L-I-N-O, in case you were wondering. Yes, it is Italian, last name, but I'm mostly Irish. Also, if you were wondering, just fun fact for you. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for uh, listening. Uh, Happy New Year. Um, I hope you guys have a blessed uh, start to 2020. Um, and I guess I will see you when the new year comes. All right, y'all. 